I want to start 1 Samuel 3 verse 1. 1 Samuel 3 verse 1. He's on his way. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. Rare. There were not many visions. The word was rare. My brother and my sister, first of all, the word can be very rare in your life. That you are poor. That you are poor that the word of God is not there. There can be a poverty because of the word of God that's not in here. There can be a lot of words that's not rare in your life. And you know in the setting what happened there. We had Eli the priest and his sons. The sons took no discipline from the father. The sons were just doing their own thing. They were told, don't do this, but do that. And then they would, in any case, go and do that. But then the father gave no discipline in any way. In any way. But then there came a lady who desperately was, she was crying out to God, the mother of Samuel. And in such a way, in the temple, that Eli thought that she was drunk. So intense and my brother, my sister, I'm asking the mothers, I'm asking you, praying for your mother, your father, or your brother, your sister, or a friend. What is the intensity in your heart when praying in a place where the word is rare? She was so intensely crying out to God. And the fruit from the prayer was the prophet Samuel where the scripture says every word that he spoke prophetically, everything came true. There was not one word that fell on the ground. But the circumstances was, the word was rare. You didn't find the word of God. You didn't find the word of God. So in Bloemfontein, in Russia, in Ukraine, in Palestine, in Israel, the word can be very rare. Because there's not a mother, there's not somebody Praying it through, praying it through till the word manifests through a person. Samuel. Where's your prayer life? Prayer in his presence. Prayer in his presence. Prayer in his presence. You are first of all in prayer, you are positioned before him in his presence. You're not positioned in your circumstances. You're not positioned in what you're going through. You are positioned in, your, in his presence. So when you pray in his presence and not in the circumstances, you don't pray, uh, throw a tantrum. When you pray in your circumstances, many times there can be a tantrum. There can be a, a cry, but a cry of fear. But when you understand, when you come before God, you come from a place where you are in his presence. If you feel it, if you see it or not. Prayer in his presence. Let's say that. Prayer in his presence. Please remember that. So when you come in prayer, you know I'm standing in his presence. That means respect. Respect how I speak to him, what I speak to him. Amen. But so this lady did it. And the fruit, and the fruit from her life, from her prayer. No, it was not the fruit from her womb, first of all. It was the fruit. It was the fruit from the prayer. Manifested through the womb. Hello? Today the church has a spiritual womb. And what must come forth through the prayer must be like a prophet that will speak forth the word of God. That the word of God suddenly will not be rare anymore. But suddenly there's a prophet speaking. There's a Samuel speaking. But he grew up where? In the presence of God. So God, if you give me a child, he will be powerful. He will speak the word of God. He will do this. He will do that for you. No. If you give me a child, I will give him back to you in your presence. In your presence presence surrender your family your friends the one those who are you are who are precious to you surrender yourself into his presence not first of all to do this 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 but god teach me how to be in your presence amen and from the place of his presence with a word that was rare poor there you don't find the word there's a breakthrough with what 
God calling Samuel by name. God calling his church by name. Each one calling you by name. Praise God for his mercy, his grace, that after the first time that he called you and you didn't hear him, you thought it was some other voice from whatever, whoever. He didn't stop calling you. Second time, he didn't stop calling you. But may there also be an Eli in your life, even if it's somebody that's not even walking accurately with God, that will tell you, hear the voice of God. When he speaks to you, say, Lord, here I am. Your servant is listening. Your servant is hearing. That's the next one, I think. One Samuel. Oh, okay, it's not there now. But where? Samuel said, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I'm hearing your voice. I'm listening. We need to encourage one another to go and hear God. To go and hear God. In a time when what? There were no word. The word of God is not there. The word of God is not there. You may be at university, wherever, at the school, in whatever your business, in the city, in whatever way that you are working, that you are studying, and you don't find the Word of God. You are called there. But in that place, you need to hear God calling your name. You need to hear God calling you for a purpose. So that at the end of the day, Samuel, you will rise up and you will speak what God is saying. That you will bring richness to Bluefontaine, richness to education, richness to in the business world, richness there where you work, where you go. That's the richness because of the word of God that's richly dwelling in you. There's a preciousness in you because you decided that what is precious is his word and you will have respect for his word. And from that place, First of all, not because you believe, not because your faith is perfect, you believe every word and every word is working in you. And No, but just because you decided, I have respect for the word of God. There was a man in America, he had an amazing, 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 successful uh, big ministry into the nations. And later they caught him with money and, and a lot of rubbish that happened. And he had to go to jail. This apostolic pastor leader, it was, and the media just, oh, they used it. They, the devil enjoyed it through the media. And, and after 10, 20 years in jail, when he came out to one of his friends that were also an apostolic leader of a ministry, he said, you know, all the way through with everything that I did that I knew that was wrong, and even in jail, I really loved God. I love Him. I love Him. But what I didn't have was the fear of God. I didn't have respect for His Word. I didn't respect what He said. When there's a captain, uh, only three of you, two of you went to the army and me. When the corporal, he's just screaming, throwing a tantrum, trying to make as if he has authority but when the general and the colonel colonel and uh, the major and this one when they would rock up not even saying a word everybody jumps up to attention because they teach you if you want to be victorious if you want to be an army that will be successful if you want to have success it's in a teamwork and you are for to have respect for authority respect for authority and you will be an excellent excellent army you will break through. You will break through. But have an issue with everything and don't agree with that and don't agree with that and then this and then that, throwing an immature tantrum. What the heck? Get out of the army. Go to heaven, but go and sit in a room and don't have a life. Because you're going to mess up the testimony in Christ. Oh, that's me and you. We need to say, God help us. Amen. I'm first. May God help us. May God help us. Amen. But the fear of God must be on you. Because with the sons of Eli that had to receive the destiny, the legacy, the new, the new, the new next generation that must receive the legacy. They had no respect for authority. No respect for their father. No respect to do the right thing. No respect for the offering of God. Malachi. 
argue about the word, argue about things, because, and they had no respect for God. At the end of hearts of the fathers were the children, children were the fathers. Why? Because in the context of respect, where I honor authority, when I honor father and mother, if I agree with them or not, when I honor, I will receive the legacy. You don't understand everything in this world. I don't understand everything in this world. I don't understand. And I mean, those disciples standing there and Jesus says, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And he said that. Guys, I don't know what I would have done if I heard that day. Looking at him and I think, Lord, what are you saying? Are you with me? I don't understand. You don't understand. We don't understand everything in this word. Not, 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 I don't know. Most of it. We will take still eternity to understand who God is. But in understanding, we will wow, wow, wow. Because the word you need to understand in the context of truth. And you can only understand this word in the context of relationship. Outside the context of relationship, there's a word. But there's a word to condemn you. That's the letter of the law that will bring death, 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 death in you. So you will hear the word. But if you hear the word not with the Holy Spirit, it will bring death. It will destroy that what is from God in you. It wasn't the sinner. It was the Pharisee. The one who took the word without the spirit. And that, those ones, they said, kill that man that says he's the son of God. It's that voices in you that will say, kill that what is from the son of God. May God help you that we will have the fear of God when we touch the word of God. That the fear of God will be on our lives when we touch the word. Not we believe and understand everything. Not at all. Never on earth before you die. You will believe everything and understand everything. But you can choose to have respect for the word. Like even every devil has respect for the word and knows. Are you with me? But when you're standing on the word of God, when the word is richly dwelling in you and you have respect for the word, then you, you, you know the guys out there in the world, they will see, hey, that man, that lady. You remember the friends of Daniel? We spoke about that for seven Sundays. Those friends of Daniel, they didn't bow. They said, throw us, throw us in the but fire furnace. Something like that. Throw us, you can throw us in the fire, we will not bow. No, 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 that's not all what they said. That's not all what they said. They said, King, you can throw us in, but, but we, whoa, whoa, whoa. We want you first to know. We want you to know that if our God is going to save us, we're going over to what you call that thing, generator. Okay. If, if our God saves us, Great. If he does not save us, we will still go in the fire. But I want you to know that this heathen king that is actually where well, it's ridiculous what he's saying, what he's doing. But it was so important for these friends to tell the king. And you telling the world, you know, if my father answers my prayer, or if he doesn't answer anything that I ask him, I want you to know that I will still serve him. Powerful, powerful. The fear of God on their lives. And they stood there in the fire, but the fourth one was the angel of the Lord Jesus that went with them in the fire. When the king saw, who's the fourth one? Who's the fourth one? People must ask, who's the one next to you? Who's the one walking through with you through the fire? Who's the one walking with you through the fire in your circumstance, in that what is going on in your life? Who's that one? They came out and they said, their God is the true God. If I'm going to serve him or not, their God is the true, genuine God. May that be the words on the lips of even the heathen kings. Scripture says, Isaiah, when you rise, nations will come. Nations will come to you. You know when? When you rise in humility. Because humility will protect you against pride. 
with humility and wisdom, you need to learn it now, not to have issues with people because that's only the day when you stand in pride and stand a lot of, in a, a lot of rubbish. But humility will protect your heart. And when you can walk with humility, God can let you rise up so that nations can come to you and they will see their God, the one that is supposed to be their God. Are you still here? Uh, don't look at me like that. Are you hungry? Tell your neighbor, I'm first hungry for the word of God. Not with a religious faith. Faith, but believe it. Amen. Are you with me? Next one. But Joseph had asked, this is the king. Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord through him? An officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah, Joseph, the king said. The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Joseph, the king, and the king of Edom went down to him. These kings, they went to him. Kings will come to your rising. Why? Why? When you humble yourself, God will raise you up. Because this guy, they didn't say, I know of a man, really, this guy, he can prophesy. Whoa, this guy, he can prophesy. This is a real prophet. No, I know of a guy. I mean, where do you find that type of servants here? Just giving the hands, wash my hands. You know, it sounds like this freaky king with freaky servants. Here's my hands and wash it. You know, here's the feet, wash the feet. Uh, the one washed the feet. Oh, revelation of worship. The one washed the hands. Oh, the king say, the word of God is with that man. The legacy, the destiny. My brother is in your lifestyle. If your lifestyle is that of a servant. Not in performance. Not in performance. When it's performance and you are stinking, there's a stinking pride in you, you will have issues. That, I'm not going to do this anymore because that guy spoke to me like this. I'm not going to do that because nobody says thank you. I'm not going to do that because nobody uh, acknowledges what I'm doing. It's okay. But that prime pride will destroy you. Not anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say amen. Because that's what you speak over your life. You speak the victory. Amen. 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 Okay, what are we saying? Once again, where's the word of God? The guys out there, they're asking, where's the word of God? So they will go with every word. If they say, you come from baboon, and you believe you come from baboon, because they say so. If they say you're a it, or a he, or a he, she, or a she, he, or a, or a, uh, or a whatever, you, want to, uh, you take it because that's the only word available. Because the word of God is rare. It's rare because the Christians don't speak. Don't speak the richness of the glory of the depth and the awesomeness of the word. Not anymore in Jesus' name. I don't speak that. I don't speak that as a curse in Jesus' name. It will not be like that anymore. Three, say amen. 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 We speak it forth that it will be so. But they are, will do, and we can say, whoa, out there in the world, look what they're doing. They say this, they, and they're going to box in the Christians anymore. You, and they say, no, nothing of Christ in the schools. Nothing of Christ in the university. But those universities there in Europe, in many universities, they were, they started in the name of the Lord. Those churches, they prayed that they will have the money to build the university. They prayed everything will be for Christ. They gave it in prayer to Christ. Some people gave their lives in a practical way so that the universities and those schools will be established just for when people without the word it became rare and rare and rare would say nothing of Christ in this place that was dedicated to Christ how did that happen rare poor people in poverty poverty is to have not the word in your heart you look at that rich guy. Why do you, are you jealous? That guy is so poor because there's nothing of the word of God living in him. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. Hello. Oh, no. When the owner of that five billion ent enterprise empire says, 
What I have is yours. Do you? Let's talk. What do you want to do? Hey, man, you are rich. But you know the head of the empire is Jesus Christ living in you. When his word is living in you and you have the words that can become a reality in your life through the head of the empire, the, 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 the empire, where all the cats and all the hills belong to him, you are rich. But what a pathetic poverty that I live in when the owner of this awesome awesome empire of the universe is living in me and I will not even take anything receive anything that he wants to give me um, I'm poor I'm then really poor Pathet pathetically poor because I actually have everything but it's not one of us anymore in Jesus name in Jesus name are you with me, my brother, my sister? So get your lifestyle in a place where you will serve, where you will understand servanthood and not understand servanthood uh, as a performance. As a performance. But it's an honor. And it was not, it was not that Elijah, Elijah told Elijah, Elijah, if you will wash my hands and serve me, you will get the double anointing and you will have an awesome destiny. I want to encourage you. You will have a fantastic destiny and an awesome future. If you wash my hands and you serve me faithfully, then you will receive all of that. I'm telling you now, it's not what Elijah told Elisha. But Elisha had a certain respect for authority. And that respect for authority would see something as a privilege. To obey you is a privilege. Thankfulness and understanding the privilege to obey. To be able to obey God is a privilege. Let's say, to obey God is a privilege. God giving me in a context of a relationship. Because through obedience, He's drawing me closer. Because only in obedience, I can receive His love. Only in obedience, I can receive more of Him. Because God is not, it doesn't have cheap love for you. That's hell and the enemy. You can have a lot of cheap love through pornography and this and that. Ah, all that rubbish. Cheap love. Cheap, cheap, cheap. But you are poor, poor, poor. But you are rich if you understand his love. But have respect for that love. Respect his love. Amen. Okay, we go on. Luke 1, 38. I am the Lord's servant. I am the Lord's what? I'm the Lord's mother or the Lord's servant? Servant. This is Mary. Mary answered, May it be to me as you have said. Other translations is, Let it be done to me according to your word. Let it be done to me according to your word. But through our lifestyle we can say, Let it be done to me according to the word of stress. We, we get the teaching of last week who's sitting at your table, voices that you hear. Let it be done to me according to the word of justification. Let it be done to me according to the word of best and bitterness. That guy, I will not give my heart there. I will not serve as if unto the Lord, because that guy, because the word of bitterness has more authority in me. Let it be done to me according to the word of bitterness. I am your servant. Bitterness, let it be done to me according to your word. Fear, I am your servant. Let it be done to me according to the word of fear. Do you hear what I'm saying? Whatever chachi thing wants to come close to you, you decide you will be that voice, that is the servant. I am your servant. I receive your word. To receive the word, you say first, I'm your servant. I'll submit to your word. I submit to the word that came through that person, that person that were jealous and said nasty things to you. Now you are reacting to that word. There's words that I can remember, that you can remember of what people told us. Maybe even your spouse, maybe even your mom, your dad, your teacher, your what, your child, your whoever. Friend, you got hurt. But now the problem is not the hurt. It's not just the, the fact that I must forgive. But I gave those words a place in my life. And then I come up, become a servant to that rubbish things that that person told me. I become a servant to those words that really hurt me. When you talk behind my back and you were unjust, 
You spread a lot of lies about my life. And spreading the lies, my life is now never the same. I, I, I cannot trust people. I've tried 10, 20 times, but I cannot trust people because this and this and this and this and this. And according to that word, I am the servant of what they said. I'm the servant. Let it be done to me according to the word. Because I tried to share the gospel, I tried to open up, and it didn't work. You are the servant of who? To the one whose words you respect the most. Next one. Be strong and very courageous, God said to Joshua. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Be strong and courageous to take the land. Uh huh. Be strong and courageous to take the land. You must go by faith, you must take the land. Be strong and courageous. How many times is it said in the word? So you need to be strong and courageous because there's a lot of giants out there. But you know, Joshua Caleb had respect, first of all, for the word of God. Not respect for the giant. The giant is our food. We're going to grow through the giant. The giant of your, your, your hockey issue with some family member or how you judged your father or somebody. That's your giant, but that's the word. The problem is not the giant. The problem is you gave the giant a voice. When that giant said, you come to me with the facts. You come to me with nothing. Hello. What, what type of dog are you? When the giant spoke, the problem was the word. When you believed the giant, the voice of the giant, and not the word of God. Because David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And what he stands for, what he says. Joshua, Caleb, they said, there's giants. But God has said, God has promised the words of God against the presence of giants. Let's say, the word of God in my mouth against the giants that I need to face. Don't go and slay a giant, first of all. Come with the word of God. And don't go and face a giant if you don't go with the word of God. Don't you go over the Jordan into Canaan. Even if you are there, you must just cross. Don't you go over there without the word of God. You're going to stand ashamed. And you will have to go back and go and die in, your, in the desert. No. It's dangerous to go into a Canaan. It's dangerous to go into the blessings of God without the word of God in your heart. You're going to destroy your life. Don't do that. Too many times it happened in the church that we so focus on the things, on the promises. What did the devil come to? Well, Jesus, he came with the word of God. He didn't come with some hachi temptation. The devil said, oh, but you can change this. This is your ability. You have a need. God will supply in all your needs. In all your needs. You can just say, and this stones will become bread. Just like this. You can just say, Satan knows the power of the word. And he says to Jesus, just speak a word. Boom. Like that lady said, and like that man with authority said, just speak a word and my, and my servant will be healed. Just speak a word and my child will be healed. But that was in the context of relationship. Uh, are you still with me? But Satan can, knows the power of the word. He has respect for the word. So, Satan can remind you about the promises that God has given you. And say, just believe it and speak that into this situation. You have this circumstance. Just stand on the promises of God and say the following. And then Jesus said, no, it's also written. It is also written. You shall not, man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word from the mouth of God. That's the first principle. Your need is the word of God. The first need in your life is you live by the word of God. That is the first bread that you eat. 
Are you with me? And even the second time, oh, he, he will protect you with his angels. You can just jump from, from, the, from the roof. I shall not tempt God. The word also says, but my brother and my sister, if you don't know the word, you don't know it is also written. So you stand on the first word that comes to you, but even the Bible can be quoted by hell and by the devil into your life. That was the temptation that hell gave Jesus. The quote from scripture into the heart and the temptation, does Jesus know? The perspective of the word, the perspective, the context that it was written. How God will supply all your needs. How God will protect you with his angels. How God will give you the vision. Because the third temptation. Well, here's the vision. We spoke about this a thousand times. Here's the vision. The reason why you came to earth, Jesus, is so that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God in Christ Jesus. I remind you about the promises of God, Jesus, Son of God. Yeah, you can take it. Just one thing. Focus on on me once instead of on your father what, what does that mean worship me he said worship me Jesus said get, get behind me Satan because God I will worship in him alone oh he didn't say bow before another God the, the temptation was first look at the vision look at the promises God has given you but look at the promises here without the spirit but you stand on the promises in the context of the word through the Holy Spirit then you will not run for the vision. And you're so running for the vision and in the process you're bowing before Satan all the way because you stand in the name of Jesus for the vision. This is what God has laid in my heart. This is my future. This is my vision. This is my job. This is my qualifications. This is... And Satan reminds you about all the promises of God. As long as you don't bow before God, but before the vision and all those other stuff. The word is scarce in your life. You are poor in the word of God. If that happens, not anymore in Jesus' name. But when the word dwells richly in you, that means when I hear the promises, I will evaluate in context. Everybody say context. What is the context of how and why God said that? What? And then Jesus says, it is also written, you will live from every word. Secondly, you cannot tempt God. You need to have respect for him. And thirdly, you will worship him alone and nothing else. But in the week, if your focus is the whole time just to get the, the, the breakthrough, if your, your focus is just to fight the stress, if your focus is you need to fight this, you need to fight that, and your focus is everything must be right, everything must be perfect, you are worshiping that thing. You're not worshiping God. But God through his spirit must teach me how to worship him. Because my focus needs to be on him, not on the vision. Come and do some of the subjects where this is dealt with very intensely. That the, one of the biggest, 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 biggest temptation is to focus on the vision and not on worship. The man of faith, the man of faith, Abram, Father Abram. Our role model in faith, except for Jesus Christ. But our role model in faith, Abram. The temptation that he stood for. After God gave the promises, God made the covenant, God gave the sign of the, pro of, of the covenant. Uh, Abraham obeyed him in so many things. And then he took him on the mountain and he said, slaughter your son. Kill your son. And Abraham said to the servants, stay here with the donkeys. I'm going up the mountain to worship God. He didn't say, I'm going up the mountain to slaughter and kill my son. That's the facts. You can speak the facts. And the whole people will say you are crazy and you will say to yourself, yes, I am crazy. If I must obey God, because this can happen and that can happen. You will not understand. How can God in his love, after he promised everything, and there's at least one son out of all the stars from heaven and all the sand of the sea, that God said, that's how, how many children I will have. Now there's one. What is this voice, voice, this voice, voice? I made sure that God's voice is established in my life so that I will know that I know when he speaks, it's him speaking. Even if he tells me to go and slaughter my son. This is Old Testament, okay? 
goes up. And what is it? He chose the worship above the vision. The vision is through, through Isaac. That everything God promised, everything God promised, everything God promised will be established. But he, in worship, he offers up the vision. Greatest temptation Satan brought, I give you the vision. Just come and worship before me. No, there's no shortcut with the promises of God. There's no shortcut into the vision. I will do what God asked me to do. I will worship him. Are you with me? After the ministry success and all the devils driven out and the healings and everything that Jesus did on earth. And now he must go to the cross. And the temptation in going to the cross is where? Gethsemane. 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 And even Jesus said, God, if this offering of myself, that's worship. If this offering, if this type of offering, intensity of this offering can be removed... It's okay. But not my will, but your will be done. Because it's all about you. Worship. 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 And he laid down the vision of what he was and what he, what he did. All the success he had on earth. And now he must go like a sheep to be slaughtered. And for the world, he looks pathetic. To the world, they mock him. <laughs> Others he could save. But there he's on the cross. He cannot even help himself. Pathetic. 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 Your flesh will many times say it's pathetic. It's pathetic. Joshua, enter the land by being strong and courageous. Have the guts to obey the word of God. And then you'll enter. Be strong and courageous to obey. Be strong and courageous to obey. Be strong and courageous to keep the word. That is the challenge. Be strong and courageous to, to obey God's word. That's Joshua 1 verse 7. Not be strong and courageous to take the land. Be strong and courageous. You need guts to obey God's word. To keep his word. And if you've done that, one of the byproducts will be so that you can take the land. You'll take the land. But you need to be strong and courageous to obey. Strong and courageous to have the guts to walk seven times around Jericho. The rest, God will do. You didn't even know he's going to do that. He will surprise you with how you will walk into Canaan, how you will walk into the victory, how you will walk into the... If you have the guts to obey him and to keep his word, not to hear the word today and, and there you go in the car and, and went by ways you didn't even know what the heck did we talk about Sunday? No. But you were a wise virgin. You, you were a wise builder. You took notes of what this Holy Spirit is saying while we are speaking right now. Because the fear of God is in your life. When there's the master, when there's the master and with the master, what he says you want to do. I respect his authority. I serve him. He can tell me to do this. He can tell me to do this. But my loyalty is towards that master. And when he speaks, what I need to do, I write down these four points. This is what God is saying to me. That is if you have respect for him. Then you will make sure. Then you will be strong and courageous to make sure that when you are alone with the word, when you worship God with a song, when you look, uh, listen to teaching, when you are here, when we come together, because you have respect for God, you will make sure that what you've heard, you will go and put it into practice. But for that, you need to be strong and courageous because hell will make sure that you don't do it, that you will be blessé with the word, that you will hear something, but nothing's not really going to change in your life. <sighs> Next one. We're going for a landing. Psalm 1 verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. What is that? Psalm 1. Blessed is the man, happy, fortunate, to be envied. Is what man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked? You walk in the counsel of the counselor, the Holy Spirit. But guys, this, the, the world will speak to you. There will be voices. The world will speak to you. The world will give you counsel. If you don't take the counsel of God, you give the world, you give your flesh the authority. So I hear today a lot of things, and you feel you can justify certain things. Who's that donkey speaking? Okay, maybe if a donkey is speaking, you will really listen. But um, 
but we can read one another in the flesh. But what is God saying to you? That will happen only if you allow the Holy Spirit as a counselor, because the Holy Spirit has, has respect for the Word. The Holy Spirit will put the focus on the Word. So if you are open for the Holy Spirit and not for other demons while we're sitting here, and here you practice what you're going to do in the week. You practice. You practice your heart. You practice your mind how to focus on the Word. Because tomorrow there's a lot of more disturbances than the hunger for a lunch. Tomorrow there are going to be ten other things that will take your focus. What about when you are in the evening or the morning busy with the word, when you speak to God, when we are here together, when you are in the cell group, when you speak to others about the word, that you practice how to focus on the word. You practice to give attention. You practice now to, to hear the one that is the one in your life. God, what are you saying to me? You're living in me. You're sitting next to me. Your hand is over me. What are you saying to me? Why you ask that? Because you have respect for God. Because the fear of the Lord is on you. But don't respect him. Then automatically you will respect some demons, some flesh, some circumstances, some other rubbish. And when you walk out here, that rubbish, that demon will have more authority than when you came in. Don't spend time with God and his word, please. If you're not going to allow the Holy Spirit to open it up for you. Because every time when you hear the word, I've heard this before. Oh, this is the 15th time you preach about this. Okay. Is it the 13th time that more of hell is established in you while you heard the word? Because for 13 or the 15 times that you heard this, you just went wara, wara, wara through it. Instead of giving attention. When that general is coming and the, when that corporal in the army is saying the same thing 2,817 times, every time, I find this boring, so I'm not going to obey, obey the corporal. <laughs> Take that guy to institution, please. I'm saying sometimes the institution is the church, but it's going to change in Jesus' name. Are you with me? No. You obey because you respect. Even if he says it the 2079 ninth time. Who's the special forces? Those who understand are very sharp of how to interpret the voice of the leader. Not the one that is the best in attacking the enemy. But the ones in the special forces that can be used, the one uh, against the enemy, is the guys that understand how to interpret the voice and the command from the commander. Because at the end of the day, if some guy is sitting in a very nice building, some president, with him and his council, those presidents that are not dictators, him and his council, say, this is what we're going to do. But from there, that's all he says. It needs to be interpreted accurately, inaccurately, accurately, to, to, up to the man on the ground. But those guys who are excellent, the special forces, everybody say special forces. The guys who are mature enough, it's the guys that are mature enough that it's nothing about them and they've learned how to focus on interpreting the right command at the right time. Be strong and courageous so that you can be that excellent soldier and not some pathetic guy that is in the army but arguing about the commands and the this and the that and the that. So what are we talking? I will respect God's counsel. So I blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked. I'm walking, you're walking through life, man. Tomorrow things gonna happen. But I will have respect for the counsel of the Holy Spirit. If I understand the counsel or not. We take the counsel in the past, not anymore, when we understand it. But if I don't understand it, I don't necessarily take the counsel. But if I understand it, that means I'm in control of it. I can control the counsel when I understand it. When I don't understand it, I feel Insecure, how I feel not safe because I don't understand. What did you say? Why must we really do that? I don't understand why we. No, okay, there is something like common sense. There is the wisdom of God. But are you catching me where I'm going with this? In the fear of God, when I have respect, that guys will go and give their lives. And you better pray 
You better pray to be effective. That your prayer before God will be effective. So when you pray for Israel, when you pray for the Palestinians, when you pray for Ukraine, the Russians, whoever, you're not there in a pathetic way to say, I, I stand with those and I don't stand with that. That is pathetic decisions from a country like ours. And we, I don't curse them. But may God's wisdom come on them. Because the Israelis, they can make a hell of a lot of mistakes. I mean, they killed your master and savior. Hello. Go and kill the most important Arab, and then it's war. So we can say we are against Israel because they killed our master. If we talk about politics. But we're not against them because we see ourselves through them. It wasn't those Israelites, those soldiers that crucified him. It was my sin and your sin that crucified him. So let's not get pathetic. Point the finger. But so in this situation also we pray that the church of Christ will rise up. Because the word of God is scared. It's, they are poor. The, the walls the, with, the, with the Jews and the, and, and the Arabs, they, and the Palestinians, the, the word of God is, is poor. There's a poverty in the word. So then we believe rather what, what, what we say in the name of Muhammad and Allah. And therefore, I don't know if you've seen the, some videos. And then, then that father, that, that person is screaming out in trauma. Because some of the kids are dead. Some of the kids are here under the rubble. I will not be able to get them. They will have to die in the next two days. And my wife or my mother, and they are under there. And the comfort, the comfort from the people next to them are, they are martyrs for Allah. They are martyrs for Allah. It's a privilege for them to die. Even if it's taking another three days, your child crying out there. Under the rubble. It's a privilege for them to die because they are martyrs for their God. Whoa! There's something that is totally wrong, but there's something about the respect of the privilege and the honor to give your life. If that is towards the God that is not the true God, how thousand, a million times more are we supposed to? see it as a privilege to lay down our lives to give a little bit more time to give a little bit more from ourselves from our skill from our resources from our, or is that a privilege for the kingdom and a privilege unto the lord that he must understand you give your time offering because you have respect for god you 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 do the right thing in your life you get the, your attitude right you get your way of doing right why because you choose to have respect for god and then, because you believe him. We are still here? Ask your neighbor, are you here? So, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but in the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Stand not in the way of the sinner. I will not stand for this. I will stand in the way that is called Jesus Christ. My stature is in, the, in Jesus Christ. He's the way. I'm standing in the strategy of heaven, and he has a name, Jesus. Let's say, I'm standing in the strategy from heaven, and his name is Jesus Christ. Please write it down and do something about it, okay? And then thirdly, I'm sitting in the seat of mockers. I'm sitting in a place where God is not respected. That is what it says. The ultimate to make sure that you are deceived and that you will not have God's blessing on your life. Blessing, hap blessed, happy, fortunate is the man who do the following. One, two, three. But the ultimate is when you don't sit in, in the place where God is mocked. So when you are with people, when you are watching a movie, when you're this, when you're that, when you entertain your thoughts, your, your heart, can God be part of that conversation and agree with you? You're sitting in a conversation and they compromise. You're sitting in a conversation and they mock. You're sitting there uh, with guys that are teaching you, either at varsity and, or in the arts or in this or in that. But, and you can desire their skill. But you need to make sure that your spirit is blocking what is coming through that person. And don't compromise 
Because if you sit in that place in the fear of God, you have respect for your best friend, best friend, best friend, best friend that gave his life to you. And you have a best friend who gave his life to you. And let, uh, a physical person. I'm less there talking about a physical person. Some guy or some lady gave like everything. They were risking their life for you. And you're sitting in a conversation with seven people. And these, the, these guys, they carry on and they belittle this guy sitting there, your best friend, and they are ignoring your best friend in everything, in everything, in everything. Your best friend can start to speak, he will, they will start to speak just over whatever he is saying. What are you going to do? You are just okay with that. But how can we then sit in the, in the, in the seat of mockers and now chill time? with certain rubbish movies or certain things, certain music that we can listen. And those guys, they just mock God. Your master, your best friend's name is a swear word to them. It's a mockery. And that is how you open your soul for a time to rest. When they, you are tired. When e e Elijah was tired, that's when... When the devil spoke to him, he said, you're the only one left. And he said to God, God, take my life. There's no other prophet. That's the guy that is the major prophet that just brought fire from heaven down. And that prophet does not on, uh, understand that there's a, quite a few other hundred prophets still. Oh no, that God needs to remind him. There's, a, there's quite a few other hundred prophets left. But he's tired and he starts to allow voices. My brother, my sister, when you're tired... Yeah, make sure you are staying in the presence of God. When you're tired, you feel fed up, when your emotions up and down, make sure, otherwise you can curse yourself. But, if I'm not going to walk in this council with these voices, not stand in the way for this, for this voice, for this word, this word, I sit in the seat of mockers when they can speak any rubbish, rubbish word that has no respect for God. How will I make sure I'm getting out of this chamors, out of this rubbish, and I'm not deceived with all these things? By doing what? But, everybody say but. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. You can meditate on the Lord day and night, but if you choose that, it will not be your delight. You're reading it in the context that how a devil will read the word. You can read the word as the devil and all demons from hell will read the word. Now read the word with all the devils from hell. Or, I choose to read the word in the context of a relationship where the Holy Spirit will open it up. And I choose that my delight, my delight... My delight is in the law of the Lord. I enjoy the word. I choose to enjoy the word. Sometimes I don't stand ashamed, but then I'm shocked with how I sometimes deal with the word of God. Because I remember when my gave, I gave my life to Christ, the baptized and baptized in the Holy Spirit, still studying at the varsity. And how after a class, I would think, I'm going to work through Ephesians. I'm on my, what is it? Yes, it fits in English. Racing bike, whatever, in those days, 40 decades ago, 40 years ago. And, uh, and I was just moving on my bike to get to, the, to home, to open it up and to start. I remember that excitement. And sometimes I say, God, what happened with that? Ish, ish. Sometimes I must remind myself, I'm excited about the word, but... That was such a special time for me. I want to say, don't want to say, God, give it back to me. Help me to get it back. But I want to grow further with it. When last were you so really excited about the word of God that you really wanted to read it? You really wanted to understand it. You want to speak it. You want to meditate on it. When last did it happen in your life? Maybe yesterday. Maybe while we are sitting here. I hope. But let's grow in that. But you will not. But if you don't find your delight in the word... You will not meditate on it. You will read it like the devil will read it. If you don't fight the delight in the word that you get excited about the word, you will walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You will stand in the way of the sinner that miss everything from God. You will sit in the seat of mockers where they mock Christ and you'll be okay with all of that. 
That will be part of your destiny. Because the only, it's not a choice not to do it. They, you don't find something like that. You cannot stand against hell. Not at all. But in the name of the Lord, the one that conquered everything, you can stand. And when the devil hear the words of the master, when they hear the voice of the one that conquered him, that, that shamed him, where? Through your mouth, through your heart, through your faith, through your lifestyle. He need to go because he's now coming not against you. He's now coming against the one where he's the loser. Are you with me? Let the victorious one speak through you. And you don't have a battle with hell. But for that, you need to be strong and courageous to get the word, to keep the word. That's meditating on the word. Not, not to hear the word, word, and I'm doing that. But now after you've done it, what are you going to do with it now? You need to keep it. You need to keep the testimony in you, in you. You need to keep the faith in you. You need to encourage others with the word, with your testimony. Testimony is something that is shared. What happened, the, what the word did in you is then not for yourself. God gave you the breakthrough. But immediately after that, you can lose, you lose your breakthrough. Because with a breakthrough, you're supposed to give him the glory. Not just acknowledge, chick, chick, God did it, and I carry on. No, 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 no. The fruit of the breakthrough is supposed to be a testimony. They, they conquered revelation. They overcame. They were victorious through what? The blood of the Lamb. Finish. No. Through the blood of the Lamb. And whatever the blood of the Lamb did in my life. Second point. Through the word of their testimony. Third point, through their lifestyle, that they didn't live, they love their own lives even unto death. Those three goes together. They go together. Are you still here? I know it's hot and I know the circumstances. But in spite of that, can you take what I'm saying? I hope so. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. Oh man, you can meditate on what that person did to you very much because he hurt you and you can have a case you can meditate on what are you meditating most of the time oh these guys that are just confessing the word confessing the word confessing the word super spiritual some of them yes some of them are really super spiritual but if you are in reality you if you are serious to come become that pilot that will not just do the Boeing but in the army even go with the is it the F-15s or something like that they all they ask these these uh, fighter jets what does it mean you need to give attention and you need to have respect for what they say and you need to do it be careful to keep it and not just to keep it once you need now to remember a, a thousand things when you get into that fighter jet if you are able to do that fighter jet you better remember a thousand things and not argue even in your head with that but you better remember those thousand things otherwise just drop out of the air like a whatever may we understand it my brother my sister god has given you the potential for that fighter jet god has given you potential to have an excellent life and do excellent works in his name he has given you that potential but if you cannot give attention because you have respect for his word give give attention when the holy spirit is speaking to you your life will just be a shame a shame because you could have you could have you could have the guy in the world couldn't he couldn't he couldn't Let's say couldn't, could have. You could have done that. He could not do that because he didn't have the possibility of excellence that is written in your spirit. You have the excellence of heaven in your spirit. And you could have had an excellent life. But that's not me and you. We're talking about because we're going to walk in excellence. Amen. Amen. Let's say lastly, I'm going to walk in excellence. Through the word of God. Because excellence is alive in me. His name is Jesus Christ. God, come and help us, please. 
We need you. We need you. We need you, Lord. Come and do that, what you want to do in our lives, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for many times being poor, poor in our perspective, poor in the Word of God. But God, help us to respect the Word of God in such a way that the fear of God will be on our lives, Lord, and so that the Word can dwell richly in us. God, I pray that we will not be foolish in a world that deception will come more and more and more and more. That we will embrace your word. Embrace your word. That when we speak, things will change in the spirit. That the world will say, the word of God, the counsel of God, the wisdom of God is with that man. If I believe in that, man, in that God or not, the wisdom of God is with that man. Have mercy on us that that will become the testimony of our lives, Lord. Even as you promised, even as you uh, prophesied, even as many people prophesied over this ministry, that we will have impact in the nations, in all continents. God, help us not to run for the vision, but have mercy on us to, have, to be strong and courageous, to understand how to obey your, God, your word and, and, and meditate on your word and keep your word. Thank you that you do that for every man and woman here and that we will choose to walk away from that other voices but to embrace what you have for us. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen and amen.